So you've made sure your water is LSI balanced, right? You're backing up your chlorine with enzymes or a secondary oxidation system, but you're still experiencing difficulty with chlorine efficiency. Hmm. Have you tested for phosphates? In the pool industry, phosphates generically means any phosphorus compound you may find in a swimming pool. Phosphates usually get into water three ways, chemically, organically, and tap water. Chemically, there are phosphate-based chemicals like sequestering agents that are popular in the pool business to prevent scale and metal stains. Organically, Weather, like wind and rain, can introduce soils and other debris from nature that contain phosphates in them. Think about plants and grass near the pool, and if the yard uses any fertilizers that could be washed into the pool during a heavy rainstorm. How about this? Are you in a rural area near a farmland? When the wind blows, the fertilizers they use are a huge contributor to the phosphates in pools. Another example of this, though rare, is soot from wildfires, which is very, very rich in phosphorus and nitrogen. Many water treatment centers treat drinking water with phosphates to protect the infrastructure. And that's a good thing they do, by the way. It's just a problem for swimming pools that we need to be aware of. We strongly suggest testing for phosphates in your tap water to see if this is a factor in your pool. Phosphorus can take many forms. We'll go into depth on each of those forms in a later session. But for right now, there are two kinds of phosphates you need to know about, orthophosphates and not orthophosphates. Orthophosphates are the type of phosphate standard test kits look for, but not the only kind in the water. So if you test for phosphates, you may not see all the phosphates that are actually there. In the presence of oxidizers in sunlight, most other types of phosphates will break down into orthophosphates. Be aware. If a pool already has a lot of algae in it, the tests will not accurately show your phosphate levels. So, if you have an algae outbreak, you need to clear the algae from the pool before you can test for phosphates. This is because when algae is present in a pool, it consumes phosphates, which is used for many of its cellular functions. The phosphates that would ordinarily show up on your test are being held inside the algae. We go into depth on our green pool cleanup procedure later in this course. Phosphates are an essential nutrient for algae and a host of other microorganisms. And if these microorganisms have a plentiful food source, they are going to multiply and flourish, which makes it a lot harder for your chlorine to keep up. Simply use a phosphate remover as needed. We'll cover how to determine the best phosphate removal regimen for your pool later on in this course. When you factor in all the other things that bog down the primary sanitizer, keeping it efficient is key. When you remove phosphates and keep the levels below 500 parts per billion, you may find your chlorine demand is reduced because the growth rate of contaminants has been mitigated. Chlorine can stay ahead and water can stay cleaner as a result. And that's why removing phosphates is our third pillar of proactive pool care.